workflow class. In this lesson, we're going to learn about Thales' theorem and its converse. We're going to be talking a lot about circles in this chapter, so I'd like you to take a moment to pause the video and write your own definitions for the five terms you see here. After you've done that, resume the video and check your definitions with my formal math definitions. So we've already spoken a lot about the first three terms a lot this year. One thing to notice is that a radius can either refer to the segment or the length of the segment. And same for diameter. It can either be the segment or the length of the segment. A chord is just a segment with endpoints on a circle. And one thing to note is that a diameter is actually a type of chord. And a central angle is just an angle that has a vertex that is also the center of a circle. So we're going to jump over to GeoGebra for a moment. And we're going to be looking at this right triangle. And we're going to look at the hypotenuse. We're going to keep it constant. So A, B is not going to change. And C is always going to be a right angle. We want to know what other right triangles can we draw with this same hypotenuse, but maybe the right angle's on a different spot. So for example, I could move C over here a little bit. A, B hasn't changed. C is still a right angle, but the legs are different sizes. So what do you notice is happening about the location of point C? What type of figure is it tracing out? Think about that. What shape do we get if we look at all of the possible locations for point C? Well, hopefully you notice that it was tracing out a semicircle. And so we could have kept going and we would get a full circle. And that is not a coincidence. And we're going to prove this. So in order to prove it, we need another theorem that we're going to prove. What we're going to do is we're going to take our right triangle and we're going to make a copy of it that's rotated 180 degrees around the midpoint of the hypotenuse. And so we end up with this rectangle. Now we want to know what's the relationship between AP, BP, and CP. Well, what do we know about rectangles? Well, they're parallelograms, so we know that the diagonals bisect each other. So in this example, both AP and BP have a length of 12. But how does that relate to CP? Well, this is a rectangle, and we know that the diagonals in a rectangle are congruent to each other. So that must mean that CD, the whole thing, is the same as a, AB. So the whole thing's 24. So each half must also be 12. So we can see here that all three of these pieces are all 12. And no matter where we move C to, that does not change. That's always going to be 12. So we just proved this little theorem by using our properties of rectangles. And we're going to use this to help us prove what is called the converse of Thales' theorem, which is what we looked at in the first GeoGebra activity. So if we have a right triangle, where C is the right angle, then these three points are points on a circle where AB is the diameter. So to prove that, we look at point P, which is the midpoint of AB, and we're going to connect that to C. And we just proved that AP, CP, and BP are all the same length. Well, if that's true, then they must all be radii, these three distances. So we can draw a circle that goes through the three of them with center P. So who was Thales? Well, Thales was an ancient mathematician from the city of Miletus, which is in modern-day Turkey. And like Pythagoras, he's credited with a theorem that it's pretty much known that he wasn't the first one to prove, but he's the one who was historically credited with it. So if you want to learn more about Thales and his theorem, you can search him on Wikipedia. So we already looked at the converse of his theorem. Let's look at Thales' theorem, so the other direction. So this says that if we have three points on a circle where AB is the diameter, then angle ACB is a right angle. So to prove this, first draw the diagram like we have at the right. And now we're going to draw in a radius, PC, like what we did before. But what type of triangles do we get? Well, AP and CP are radii, so they have the same length. So this must be isosceles, and the same for the other triangle. So what can we do to prove Thales' theorem? Well, if we label everything correctly by using the base angles theorem, we should be able to figure out that ACB is a right angle. So let's label them according to the strategy here. 
we want to express the measure of angle ACB in terms of A and B, A degrees and B degrees. So we want to call the base angles on the left-hand side A degrees and the base angles on the right-hand side B degrees. So what can we say about angle ACB? What's its measure going to be? Well, its measure is simply A plus B. And what can we do to prove that we have a right angle? Look what we have here. We have A degrees, B degrees, and A plus B degrees. Those are all angle measures in a triangle. Let me know what the angles in a triangle add up to. 180. So if we add all of those together, which is 2A plus 2B, that equals 180. And so if we divide everything by 2, we end up with A plus B equals 90, which proves that angle ACB is a right angle. Let's go and apply what we've learned in this lesson. So first you want to find the measure of angle C. Well, they tell us that AB is a diameter, and we just learned that it must be 90 degrees by Thales' theorem. So now can we find out what AB is? Well, AB is a diameter, and they give us the radius is 12.5, so the diameter is just going to be twice the radius. Now what about BC? Well, that's a leg of a right triangle. So what theorem can we apply to figure it out? We use Pythagorean theorem, right? We know the radius is 12.5 and the diameter is 25. And we know this leg is 7. So try to solve that with Pythagorean theorem. We should get 24. Oops, that should be an exponent here. And if you didn't notice that this is a Pythagorean triple, you could just go through the steps here. It should also be an exponent. Sorry about that. So 7 squared is 49. 25 squared is 625. Subtract 49 from both sides and take the square root, and we get 24. Okay, another example this is similar to what we saw earlier in the lesson with drawing in the radii. So... Let's see if we can figure out what each angle measures. So angle DAB. Well, let's see. DAB is a vertex angle of an isosceles triangle. Right? We know that this angle is the same as this angle over here. So those are both 18 degrees. So the vertex angle here is going to be 180 minus 18 minus 18, which is 144 degrees. Okay, what about angle BAE? Well, by similar idea, that's 26. This has to be 26. So subtract those from 180, and we get 128. What about angle DAE? Well, if you look at the middle, we have all of these angles around a point. We know they add up to 360 degrees. So 360 minus 144 minus 128 gives us 88 degrees. In this lesson, we learned how to apply Thales' theorem and its converse. Thank you for watching this video.